Good afternoon, friends. It's Heather at Bush Puppy Farm. Hope you're doing great today. We have a three day, two and a half day break in our rain. So I'm gonna take the time today to do some fruit tree pruning and fertilizing and getting them all ready for spring. So it's a sunny day, uh, it's the afternoon, it's nice and warm. It's like 50 degrees Fahrenheit, it's really lovely. And like I said, it's gonna be 48, maybe a little bit more hours before we get rain. That's plenty of time for any of the cuts I make, pruning cuts I make to heal over and uh, keep the trees safe um, through the rain coming up. So what I'm gonna be doing is lightly pruning some of my fruit trees. Uh, most of them got a pretty hard prune last winter, so I'm not gonna go crazy on them, but make some adjustments. I'm also going to be giving them some fertilizer. In this case, I'm using this uh, citrus and fruit tree fertilizer. And also going to be using some of this. It's called takedown spray. It's a horticultural oil. There's a number of different types of horticultural oils out there. These are sprays that you put on during the dormancy period of fruit trees to uh, help knock down any pests so that you can move into the spring season pest free. Now, the one that I'm using, this one uh, just happens to be the one that's available at my local garden center. Pyrethrins are created from chrysanthemum plants. Not so much the flower, other parts of the plant that is crushed down and goes through a process. Um, so what you get is a chemical, pyrethrin, that's in the, in the chrysanthemum, that uh, attacks, it incites the, um, the nervous system of the insect, makes it crazy, it ingests a lot, and then it kills it. So, uh, it's very effective. It's used a lot for mosquitoes and moths and fleas and ticks and things like that. Um, it's actually safe to spray on food. Um, however, like in your garden, however, I would wait a good week before harvesting it. Um, it is, it is uh, listed as okay to use as a pest. It is a pesticide in organic gardening. So, this is the one I'm using. I have not had pest problems on my fruit trees, but I've always used this product on my fruit trees before they break bud. And so I don't know if it's because I don't have pests or because the pyrethrin works, but I will, um, I'll put a link to, um, information about this, not just this product because other products contained pyrethrins. Um, but just because it's organic and safe uh, doesn't mean that it's safe, right? So yes, it's made from chrysanthemum flowers, but it is highly concentrated. This is basically, um, this whole bottle is mostly water. It's 98% water with 1% uh, canola oil and 0.01% pyrethrin. So it's powerful stuff. You don't want to breathe this in. You don't want to get it on your on your body, on your clothes. So you just need to take some caution while you're using it, um, just like any other product you would use in the garden. So it's not that it's like going to kill you, but it can make you sick, especially if you inhale it. Um, so just putting that out there. Uh, so yes, I do consider my garden an organic garden and um, that, Occasionally I do use pesticides. Those would be either the pyrethrin um, or um, Bt, uh, which is a bacteria that attacks certain um, pests. So um, I try to keep it as simple as possible, as easy as possible, as safe as possible. The other uh, reason to be spraying this during the dormant period of the trees is that especially before bud break, is that if you spray them now, when it's just sticks, no pollinators are gonna be attracted to the tree because there's no flowers there. So it, it protects the pollinators from coming by because it's not like the pyrethrin can choose what type of insect it wants to kill, right? 
So my bees are pretty much sleeping. I only see them come out of their hive occasionally uh, because it's been cold and generally bees stay in their hives until the weather is at least 55 degrees and their hive is warm enough. Otherwise they've got to protect that queen. They keep uh, trading places in there, uh, moving from in and out of the, of the ball in the center of the hive to keep the queen warm and the brood at a consistent temperature. So they're not really venturing out much right now. So that's another good time. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is spray these baby trees here because these all went in. I have two nectarines, a Santa Rosa plum and a jujube and um, two elderberries. And they all went in, uh, I think last January or February. They're too small to prune. They have only a few stems. None of them are crossing. None of them are diseased or dying. So they can all stay the way they are. I'm just gonna go on and spray them. Incidentally, pyrethrins are usually what is used in lice shampoo. So, you know, you've probably come in contact with it plenty of times if you, like me, have actually, my kids, my boys are super lucky. We had lots of outbreaks of lice um, in preschool and my kids never got it. Um, I would have been fine with shaving their heads because they're boys and you know, uh, but they never even, they never got lice, which was lucky because I got lice when I was about eight years old and my hair was down to my butt and my sister got it at the same time and so did my cousin and we were all visiting my grandmother. So my poor grandmother, this is back in the seventies, had to use what's called pine tar soap on our hair, our long, thick hair, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, and then sit with one of those knit combs for hours with each of us. All three of us had hair down to our butts. <laughs> God, what misery, that poor woman. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was just an aside, but just to let you know, it's not like this is a super toxic substance. Most of us have come in contact with it before. It's very effective. It does come from a plant, but as with any garden product like this, you should just be cautious. So I'm gonna make sure the, the breeze is coming from this way. I'm gonna make sure I'm upwind and then I'll be good. This is my one and only pear tree. I did have another one over here, but it had some kind of horrible rust issue and I could never get rid of it, so I pulled it out. Um, this tree gave me fruit once. It was not this past year, but the year before, so 2022. It gave me a whole bunch of pears on this branch right here, and then they all aborted when they were about this big, which probably means they never got fertilized. So uh, I'm giving it another couple tries, <laughs> but I can see some of these branches go really, really tall and I don't necessarily want a super tall tree here. So I'm actually going to cut back a little bit up there. This, this is the main stalk here or what you might call the central leader. So there's a number of ways to prune shaping wise your fruit trees. Um, in general, a vase shape is a great idea because it keeps the center open. It allows for lots of airflow and that reduces um, pest, pest and disease. And so um, there's a spur here that has grown around the tag. <laughs> this is a Bosque pear. So uh, this has grown with a central leader. Now it does have a vase shape down here, but if I wanted to continue that vase shape, I would have to take off pretty much this entire central stem. And I'm not really willing to do that. We'll see how it does this year. So uh, I have a blueberry back here. And so these kind of come into contact. I have to make sure I keep plenty of space there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be looking for any, um, first of all, any branches that are crossing. So this is one right here. I'll bring you in close to see it. I have a couple of these little kind of like water spouts. In other words, like secondary branches that pop up out of old scars um, that are crossing. When you have branches that cross, they rub together and then they can open up a, a wound on the tree for disease. So you don't want crossing branches. Um, I'm also going to check for anything that is dead or dying or anything that looks like it's got disease and I'm gonna remove all that. So far, I'm not seeing anything. Then 
I'm going to look and see, because this is, this is the one tree that's going to get a decent pruning, uh, see if there's much stuff that I want to pull back from it. Otherwise, I'm kind of going to let it be and we'll see what kind of production we get for fruit this year. So when I talk about crossing branches, here's, here's a branch right here coming out of this branch and it's literally laying against this main branch here. That is gonna cause a problem. And this is really, I mean, there's that's useless. So I'm gonna go on and cut that off. I'm also gonna remove this because it is growing in a weird way that's rubbing against this branch here. We also don't need this one. And then we'll see where we go from there. Got another crossing branch here. I'm actually gonna take this whole branch off and I'm actually tossing these branches, these that I'm trimming off into one of the birdies beds because it's gonna make a great bottom layer underneath all that compost when it comes. This branch is not crossing anything, but it's heading into the center of the tree and I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna cut that off. Okay, this branch is trying to cross. I'm gonna remove that. I'm thinking I'm gonna take this uh, central leader back. It's getting really tall. If we get fruit way up there, I'll never be able to reach it. So I think I'm gonna take it back right here and I may need the big loppers for this one. Oh, nope, got it. Okay. Now that was a pretty severe cut, but again, this would have been way too tall. I mean, as it is, that's about four and a half feet high. A little too much branch for the top of this tree. Um, and we also have a branch here that's going to cross the other ones. All right, everything else is moving outwards. It's looking okay. I think it's gonna be fine. Um, I'm hoping that I will get, and that I don't see anything diseased. I don't see anything dying. This is all fresh wood. It all looks really good. When I'm done with all the pruning of the trees, I'll give this guy a good spray with horticultural oil and we'll be good to go on that. This is a Santa Rosa plum. But as you can see, it's got some weird growth going on here. I am going, so you can also summer prune. I'm gonna leave this and see if we get any uh, fruit on this strange, I don't even know what would have caused it to do that, on this strange curve here. I'm gonna leave it and see if we get any fruit on it. If we don't, in the summer when I prune, I'll take that whole stem off. This is a five in one. Uh, plum. However, I think at this point we only have two. Oh no, we have five. No, four. There's only four. So uh, this branch here is a Nubiana plum. This is late Santa Rosa. The main one is a beauty plum. And this back one is a La Rota plum. I've not gotten a whole lot of fruit off of this um, ever. And uh, last year it had a major, uh, something must have fallen on it or maybe it was from one of our storms, but this main branch broke off and was hanging. So I had to remove that and you could see it's definitely, this is, this is all scar tissue. So I'm gonna see what it does. I am gonna have to take some things off like this is a crossing branch and I'll check and make sure like, oh no, that's not dead, but that is a crossing branch. So I'll take that off. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. I'll remove the crossings and then maybe we'll get some fruit. This is an apple tree. This one is a Fuji, one leaf left from the season. <laughs> Our trees actually do lose their leaves. We are just in the zone uh, down here that'll allow them to drop their leaves. Otherwise, if you're in a warmer zone trying to grow fruit trees like apples and stuff that are generally deciduous, you might have to strip their leaves, but we don't have to do that here. They actually do lose them. So uh, we are in advance of bud break, but the buds are forming, um, if you, as you can see. So I don't really think I'm gonna do any pruning on this tree. I don't really see any issues. All of it's vase shaped, all the, ish, all the branches are coming off outwards away from the tree. I mean, we have a couple like this one right here, but that one, there's a possibility that in the future it might bear some fruit. So I'm gonna leave it. Again, in the, in the summer prune, I can make some adjustments if needed. This one here, this is our honey crisp. Um, I am going to take off 
some uh, some of this branch, not the whole thing, because it does help form kind of a nice vase shape. Uh, but I'm going to pull some of it back because as you can see, it is um, coming into potential conflict with this other apple tree. Same thing with this. The thing is, this branch and this branch were the only two branches on any of my trees that bore apples last year. So I'm very loath to cut them back too far. However, this one I will take back probably to here so that there's still room this way for this tree and this tree to put some more growth on. So I'll just shorten these a little bit, but these here are the spurs that bear fruit. So I don't really want to remove those. Um, I'm hoping that this year we'll get some more fruit on this guy too. So none of these trees really need a major amount of pruning. Like I said, they got a pretty hardcore prune um, two years ago. And because I'm keeping them really small, they don't put on a huge amount of growth. They do put on some upward growth um, and that I can control. But in terms of the, the lateral growth, it hasn't been really extreme. So my next steps now are to fertilize and I'm going to just pull these wood chips away a little bit. I mean, for the most part, I've been very careful not to put the wood chips up against the trunk that can cause a lot of disease. Um, definitely don't want that. And I'm not measuring. I'm literally just going to put a handful down around here and then we'll wait for the rain because as soon as it rains in a couple days, this will soak in and then the tree will be ready for the spring. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, do a light pruning or a hard pruning, depending on what your trees need. Some horticultural oil and some fertilizer around the base and you're good to go. Just make sure you do all of this before the buds break and the leaves start coming out. You wanna catch the tree while they're dormant. In the summertime, we can talk about summer pruning, which is a different type of pruning. But for right now, we're all set for spring. So keep your fingers crossed that there's actually some fruit this year. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful time in your garden, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.